The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host. Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy between a blog around the OA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminators on Orient Neighbor Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube and those watching on Orient Neighbor Television. A lot to look at this week here, obviously, of course, recapping what's been going on around the league. Um, you know, obviously, we've had some upsets that we got to talk about, obviously. Um, I think the Clarkson game against Harper Woods, that does require some a lot of attention because, you know, because it, it p- puts some ramifications for both teams. Um, and then obviously, you know, West Bloomfield's um, total annihilation of Southfield. I mean, that was not even close. I mean, yeah, the score reads 31 20, but that was just a dominant Laker, Laker domination. We're going to break that one down. Um, and also, we're going to preview some of the big games around the league this week. Um, of course, a lot of people looking at the Lake Orion Celine game, um, which is going to be really interesting. Also, you got Clarkson, Utica, Eisenhower, um, Oxford against Udy Jesuit, um, and Adams, Rochester, and um, Adams against Sterling Heights Stevenson. That's going to also be really interesting as well. So, we're going to look at all the games here this week, here, um, you know, this week here on the podcast. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but let's look at our first game here, and I think this one here requires a lot of attention here. And this one was a stunner um, over at Clarkson High School. It was Clarkson's homecoming. Um, but when you look at the score, it read Harper Woods 34, Clarkson 7. And a lot of people on the stage are going to be like, what? What the heck happened? I mean, what happened to Clarkson? Um, I can tell you what happened to Clarkson. Um, obviously, um, I mean, like Kobe Taylor, he had a big game for Harper Woods. Um, um, he, he early on, you know, with the running attack and then Stephon Buford and Nate Washington both had really good games in the air. So really, when you look at it, you know, when you look at it here, Clarkson's defense truly misses Adam Denver. They miss Adam Denver. That's honesty there. And their offense really struggled in that game against Harper Woods. I mean, albeit a lot of it comes down to Brady Collins, you know, he got shut down. And I give credit to Harper Woods' defensive line. Um, Harper Woods' linebackers were really good in that game. Um, But, you know, you really look at the stats – you know, on, besides a early touchdown from an early touchdown from um, Collins to Desmond Stevens, Clarkson really didn't do anything. They really didn't do anything. I mean, this is where I get a little flabbergasted a little bit with Clarkson. Is you have a six foot six tight end and Brody Cozen. And he only has two catches? That don't sound right to me. That don't sound right. And then Desmond Stevens, you know, he's doing everything he can. And then I'm hearing the Clarkson Independence broadcast saying, like, they need more than two guys to step up. And I'm going, like, when your two running backs are sophomores and the Bowman Twins, you have a sophomore quarterback. I mean, you. I mean, really, when you look at that game with Clarkson, they lost it on all three levels. Offense, defense, and special teams was like the icing of the cake when they when Harperwood scored on a fake punt for a touchdown. So, you ask me this question. I mean, Clarkson, you know, they're... Their skill players are very young. And they're saying they need someone else to step up besides one or two players. Cozen only had two catches. Stevens is doing everything he can. And you're saying on that broadcast, somebody else has to step up. 
I mean, you look at a course in the West Bloomfield game, Griffin Bowman had three touchdowns. He was shut down by Harper with his defense. Give the Pioneers defense credit there. And then you look at a course, you know, they did a pretty good job on Des Stevens. Okay? But then you got to wonder where was Lucas Bowman? Where was he in this game? Um, they did a really good job on Brady Collins. They really did. So, albeit, when you look at Clarkston, um, bottom line was, they, they, they just lost to another football team. That's really what happened. You know, Harper Woods, I know Coach um, Rob Oden on Twitter before the game said they were going to go and shock the world and make a statement that they're here. I'll tell you what, I've already known they've been here. But to go on the road in that environment and win at Clarkson's homecoming, I know the last time Clarkson lost homecoming, I remember this, was I think it was 2019. 2011 was the last time I think they lost one. And actually it was 2008. I remember when they lost to Southfield Lathrop. I mean, I remember that one. But when I look at Clarkson the last two games defensively, they've allowed 66 points. That's not good. Now, albeit, you know, it's against Lake Ori and Harper Woods. I mean, something's got to change on that defense. I mean, yeah, I mean, Adam Denver's out, and that's and that hurts him. I mean, yeah, they have 36 against West Bluefield. But when you really look at the situation with Clarkson, you know, their defense is a problem. Their offense really struggled. Their offense struggled, albeit it's in the rain. You know, in the rain, you have to have a good ground attack. Clarkson's ground attack, they're young. Both Bowman twins run the ball. I mean, and then you have Independence Tobin saying, other guys got to step up. You know, you have you have a six foot six wide receiver slash tight end. You can throw the ball to. You have Ryan Rector. Um, he's doing everything he can. You have Desmond Stevens, who's doing everything he can. And the fact of the matter is, you know, when you look at Clarkston, they're a young team. Yes, they're four and four, but they're very young. So, and they got a difficult matchup coming up with Utica Eisenhower. So, you know, when you look at with Clarkson, their situation going forward, it's a difficult road because you're looking at a possibility now of if you're looking at your postseason fate, you're looking at possibly having to either go to Davison first or... Or, you know, maybe going to Lake Orion first. Now, do I see Clarkson going to Lake Orion first? Probably not. Um, but I do see Clarkson, if they lose to Eisenhower and other surrounding things, maybe going to Davison. It's possible. It's news to you has Clarkson going to Dav Clarkson in Davison's district. I think Clarkson matches up well with them. But I'll tell you what, their defense has to get cleaned up quickly. And you look at that team right now, if you're a team that relies a lot on Dez and a lot on, on Brody, that could be a problem. Because you need others to step up. That's true, what they said. But you got to figure out, okay, your two, your two running backs are sophomores. They're talented sophomores, but... You know, they're they're young. You know what I mean? They didn't play a lot last year as freshmen. You have a sophomore quarterback in Brady in a Brady Collins. I mean, he's doing everything he can. I mean, with Clarkston, if I had to say it to the critics, and especially those from Independence Television, be patient with them. Be patient. I mean, but I was really shocked that they didn't use Cozen a lot. That was the one that really shocked me with Clarkson. They got to use him more. You got to use him more. I mean, he's an Indiana commit. I mean, that's what I would say to Coach Justin Pitar right now. Use him more. Use Cozen more. 
because now you get you guys that are coming up. That's a tough game for you, and especially on your defense, because now you get to see a quarterback in Preston Crum, um, and they're also the Comac Red champions. So on the flip side, let's go to Harper Woods. How and I'm looking at this with Harper Woods is, are you kidding me that if they don't get a number one seed in the in in Division Four, something's up? Because I'll tell you what, I'm comparing Redford Union's schedule and Harper Woods' schedule right now, and it's not even close. It's not even close. I mean, Harper Woods has played. Almost every team from Division One and Division Two. Have they won all those games? No. But I'll tell you what right now. I don't want to see them if I'm in Division Four. I really don't want to see them. Because they match up well with teams in their district like Detroit East English Village Prep. They match up well with they match up pretty well with um with um with Chelsea. I think they match up well with Goodrich if they go up there. I mean, I think, you know, playing those teams, especially going up to Clarkston, has really helped a team like Harper Woods. You have a two-quarterback system that has proven to be very effective in Saban Buford and Nate Washell. I thought Nate Washell had a great game against Clarkston. He had a nice, long, deep, deep touchdown pass, but also Stephon Buford. Had a nice game as well. I thought Colby Taylor did well early. You know, because what happened that game was, against Clarkson was, was, was Harper Woods ran the ball on him. They ran the ball on him and had a big, long touchdown run. And then Harper Woods decided, okay, we have playmakers at wide receiver. Let's go burn them deep. They did that. They did that with both quarterbacks. Buford caught a touchdown. He also threw for a touchdown. He had a big game for, he had a big game there. But I thought Nate Washell, he played really well. I mean, he played really, really well. I mean, if you're Coach Rob Oden, you got to be just excited for this. You got to be excited. And they look good in those pink uniforms too. I really loved their pink uniforms. Albeit, and I'm thinking to myself, I mean, like, you know, I saw them when they wore those against um, Farmington. They look good in those. I mean, and then they wore the all-white look, all-white all white style with the pink uniform. They look good. They look really good on them. Now, I'm not sure if Coach Molden's going to wear the pink the rest of the way, but I'll tell you what, they look really good. On them. I mean, really. Um... Running game looks good. The only issue I had with Harper Woods is the penalties. And this is something that Coach Owen has to address. You can't just go and commit like a holding penalty or like have like some extracurricular activity penalties. You can't have that. That's not a recipe for success. If that's not, if it's not, you know, that's not, I mean, that's, that's going to hurt you in the playoffs. You know, so when you look at with Harper Woods, the only issue that I have with Coach Oden's team is penalties. If they can clean those up, I think they're going to be fine going forward. So when you look at Harper Woods' situation, I love where they're at in Division Four. I really do. But one thing they got to do better is clean up those penalties. And I think they will. So, you know, with that game, obviously, you know, we'll see. But Harper Woods, I like where they're at right now. Other game I'm, I was curious to see all weekend was West Bluebeer and Southfield. You know what? I was really impressed with Coach Jack Hilbert's team. I mean, Josh Tate came back. Bryce Rogue came back. Um... Albeit John Dan he's had he's had he he's been really good for West Bloomfield in Rowe's absence, but that defense was missing something without Bryce Rowe, though. I thought their defense played outstanding against AT. I really did. Um 
They shut down Isaiah Marshall. Um, Raekwon Nance, he had a big game for West Bloomfield. Um, Elijah Durham was kept quiet, but when you look at the game Raekwon Nance played, or as they call him, Rick Nance over at West Bloomfield, I know Tyler Captain, I'm Zach Hilbert's the company, they call him Rick Nance over there. Um, when you look at West Bloomfield right now, um, it looks like, you know, they still got some question marks, but I think they've, I think that Southfield game really answered me some questions when I watched that game. Um, Brandon Davis Swain had a nice game for West Bloomfield. Um, I know they call him the Punisher over there. Um, but I thought he had a really nice game. Um, the linebacking core, um, despite the injuries to Kari Jackson and um, Montreal Johnson. Um, I really think at the end of the day here with West Bloomfield, um, they did what they had to do. They went in there. They went in there and um, took care of business. And especially against a team like Southfield Arson Tech, who was coming in undefeated. But then in Southfield's case, you know, and I'm going to argue their case in a minute here. I think that game proved to me that if you're Southfield Arson Tech, the road to a state championship for them goes through the swamp. It goes through the swamp. And honestly, that's what it goes to. So when you look at that case here um, with West Bloomfield, um, I think honestly, you know, they got themselves in a good position right now, I think maybe to host a playoff game. Now, albeit according to Snooze's map, he's got them with Lake Orion, Clarkston. I don't see that because honestly, you know, you got to look at the playoff scenarios, top eight. You then got to look at the next eight, next eight, next eight. That's how you got to look at it. So, but for West Bloomfield, they're one of the top eight teams right now. And I think they deserve two home games for the playoffs. And no matter where, where it is, if you're like a team like Southfield, Arts and Tech, the road goes to the swamp. It goes through there. Um, and then on Southfield's case, um, for the Warriors, Isaiah Marshall didn't have a good game. Um, they shut down the rushing attack. They shut down Tashi Braceville. Um, obviously, West Bloomfield, we know they got two proven corners in Jimmy Benjamin and um, and Bryce Rowe. Um, they, they played well. They played really well. But I also thought maybe at that, that, that layoff, you know what I mean, albeit... The rest of White, except for the exception of Harper Woods and Groves, um, really, really um, didn't test Southfield too much. I thought Rochester might have given them something. But that those couple weeks, you know what I mean, that long lag, you know, where they're blowing people out, you know, getting their reserves, and that's, yeah, that helps them. But isn't that going to sharp, iron sharpens iron usually? And. In Southfield's case, you know, that game against West Bloomfield, you know, yeah, West Bloomfield was motivated. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it was in the swamp. And albeit, you know, West Bloomfield, they found a way. You know, they were, I thought in that game against Southfield, Arsenal, Tech, they were the better team. They were the better team. I mean, clearly, when you look at the film in that game, they were the better team. Rest of the OA red versus white games, obviously. You got um Lake Orion had no issue with Farmington 42-7. Um, we're gonna talk that Lake Orion, especially with their big game coming up with Celine in a little bit. Um Adams, no problem with Bloomfield Hills winning that game. Um, obviously my heart and thoughts and prayers are with um Jerry Prescorn with the Prescorn family at this time. Of course, some um, Jerry Prescorn I knew him very well. Um you know, my heart's and my heart and prayers are with the Prescorn family at this um at this time right now. So OA Nation, thoughts and prayers to the Prescorn family at this time. Um Am's really no problem with Bluefield Hills. Um interesting game Loom with Sterling Heights Stevenson coming up. We're gonna talk that one as well. 
Um, Stony Creek beat Rochester in Falcon Frenzy game pretty convincingly there. 35-7. Um, they got new ball boy made it close out the year. Um, the red blue crossover game, um, Oxford against North Farmington. Oxford won that one 34 7. Big, 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 big game coming up for them against UD Jesuit. Monster game for them. Oxford wins that game during the playoffs. No questions. I mean, they're the 32nd team right now in Division One. Big one for them, Lumen. Um, and the blue and the white gold, gold crossover. Groves knocked off Ferndale. Um, I mean, like it was 49-14. Um, Groves getting ready for that big showdown with Seaholm coming up. Um, we'll see how that one goes. Um, Groves had a nice game from uh, from Noah Sander. I mean, like they had a nice game there. So we'll see what happens there in that one. Um, recapping, of course, the other goal games. Um, Berkeley falling thirty-seven nothing to Royal Oak for the um for the um Battle of Woodward Trophy. Royal Oak starting to starting to believe in themselves right now. Last two games, I'll tell you what, seventy-four points. That says something. If you're you you, you got to love that if you're Coach Colin Campbell. I mean, your offense is starting to click at the right time. That's going to build you for the future next year. I really like the direction that program has been going. Berkeley on the other side of things, I'll be honest with you, hit rock bottom. They have hit rock bottom. I mean, there's not no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That team has hit rock bottom. And that's just honesty right there. I mean... I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say there. Ferndale's case, obviously, you know, they it's been a rough year for them. Really, really rough year. Um But we'll see what happens. They got Sinclair Shores Lakeshore coming up. Um we'll see what happens there in that scenario there. Um and then let's go to the blue. I mean you look at the blue and you look at, of course, that division. Oh, and I forgot to mention Avondale had no issue with Pontiac. Um, that was a little closer than I thought, though. I mean, I mean, Avondale did not. I mean, Pontiac, I'll tell you what. I really like the direction that Coach Wendell Jefferson's got that program going. For Avondale and Coach Bob Meyer, it's just getting ready for the postseason right now. So, that's my take on that. Let's go now to the blue. Because... Seaholm knocked off Oak Park. Um, and there were a lot of playoff ramifications on this game here. I want to talk Seaholm first. Obviously, when you look at the Maples winning the blue this year, <laughs> says a lot. Um, when you have both Kenny brothers, Kyle Robbins, um, your defense was solid all night. They shut down Ariel Greitan. Um, when you look at Seaholm, this is the game they're getting ready for. Your arch rival. And we're gonna preview that one because that one's gonna that one's got some fireworks written all over that one. Between Seaholm and Groves. That should be a fun one. Um North Farmington, as I said, they're gonna be fine. I'm not worried about them postseason wise. Um I wasn't too worried about them when it comes to the postseason. They're going to be fine. Now, Oak Park. When you look at Oak Park, the fact of the matter is, and I'm looking, and I'm reading Goose Poops, Goose Poops on, um, on Twitter. Of course, um, there is a site. He's a playoff, he's, he's a playoff wizard. Um, really nice guy. Um, follow, he follows me on, on Twitter. He called X now, I guess. Um, so I did, I did his playoff with him and I looked at Oak Park in the case of if they win or if they lose, you know, if they lost both games, he still has them in. <laughs> so I'm going like, wow, why is that? Because, but then I look at, of course, the schedule. Obviously, if Oxford wins, they're in. 
I mean, like, obviously, if Oak Park wins, you know, if Oak Park knocks off West Bloomington, bottom line, they're in. But if they lose, they're going to be praying. So, you know, that's, that's the scenario I have for Oak Park. Because of the postseason scenario where they're at right now, and I do have the playoff, um, I do have the um, playoff um, projections for each team here. And I think, and I'm, and I think this is good to get, to, to have everybody know about this is, you know, I do, I do an update. If you look at the blog, call, I call it post If you look at the column called postseason watch, um, <coughs> Oak Park, I still think needs to win out to get in. I mean, they played a difficult schedule. I mean, they got losses to UD Jesuit. They lost Oxford, um, Seaholm, North Farmington. You know, you got West Bloomington coming up in Night Valley. Um, you win that game, you're in. You lose that, you're praying. Oxford, you knock off UD Jesuit, you're in. You don't, you're done. That's really what it is for Oxford. Um, other than that, everybody else is safe. Um, and then you look at, of course, the battle between, um, you know, the battle between Troy and Troy Athens. Um, that game was really interesting because the winner still controlled their postseason fate. The loser was done. And Troy knocked off Troy Athens. I was shocked how, how that game was. You know, I was really surprised that it was 35-14. Um. In favor of um, uh, yeah, I was shocked that um, it was, it was that way though. I was really, really shocked that um, you know, I didn't expect that um, you know, I was shocked it was thirty five fourteen, but you know, thirty five thirteen, but just really didn't expect. You know, I thought Troy Athens would come in here a little bit more prepared than I thought. I mean, the difference was in that game. Noah Block played great. He played really well offensively for them. Um, also what hurt that, what hurt Troy Athens was, you know, this, the inability to stop their defense. So give credit where credit's due though. I think Troy winning that game. Now they get Frazier and then most likely a first round postseason clash with an OA red heavyweight. Could it be West Bloomfield? Could it be an OA white heavyweight in Southwood Arts and Tech? I don't think so. So I'm looking at what Troy it's either you're going to see West Bloomfield or you're going to see Lake Orion. I mean, those are the two scenarios that I see right now with Troy um, in the postseason. Um, but if they lose to Frazier, I don't know how that's going to play out. I don't expect them to lose to Frazier, but Frazier's still a team that's bound for, um, you know, but we'll see. I mean, they could spoil some, somebody's season. For Troy Athens, bottom line is, you know, second straight year gonna miss postseason. Um, you know, change is gonna have to be made. Um, obviously, so that's something to really watch for. Um, going forward there, when you look at um Troy Athens scenario. Um, really. So that's my take. Um, on last week's games. So let's look at this week's games because there's a lot of. There is a lot of them, and we got a preview of them all. Um, obviously, when you look at the games week one, I mean, let's look at our first game here before I do projection. We got to look at Pontiac taking on Garden City. Um, this one's interesting because this is a game where I think Pontiac's got a chance to win, and I think they have a chance to win. Now, Garden City... He lost the running back last year, the graduation. They haven't been the same team since. Albeit the games in Garden City. And I think Kanye Donaldson's played really well this year for Pontiac. I mean, he's really did, despite the losses that they had. I mean, he's led them to three wins. That says a lot about that program. Um, Just where they've been. Obviously with Garden City. I don't see a postseason run for them this year. Um, but you never know. You really never know with them. So when I look at this game here, and I'm going to look at here is 
Last year, Garden City went and hammered Pontiac last year. It was not close. I think it's a different Pontiac team, under, especially under Coach Wendell Jefferson. It wouldn't surprise me if Pontiac goes down to Garden City and wins. It would not surprise me. And I think that's what's going to happen. I think the Phoenix go down to Garden City and get a big win there. I think they're going to get a big win down there. I mean, yes, Garden City is going to run the ball a lot. And Pontiac, we know, has played a tough schedule. They played it tough all year. But I really like this Pontiac team. I think the Phoenix go down there to Garden City and get a win. They go down there and get a win. And then let's look at our next matchup. We got Berkeley taking on St. Clair Shores Lakeview. Um, these two teams have been totally in opposite directions this year. St. Clair Shores Lakeview is on the verge of getting in the playoffs in Division One, For a wing T offense, um, they've had a great year. A really great year. Berkeley, on the other hand, has hit rock bottom. They have really hit rock bottom. If there's a program that needs a serious reboot, this is it. The way that that team's played, they've been shut out in some games. You just lost the Battle of Woodward Trophy to your arch rival. Um, it's hard to explain what has, got, what has happened to Berkeley. It is really hard to explain what has happened to that team. Because Berkeley, a couple years ago, were battling for a league title. I had them rank, ranked fourth in the, um, in, around the OIA poll. I had them ranked, you know, they were, they were rolling. And now they've fallen on hard times. They have really fallen on hard times. And you look at the Husky side of things, this is a golden opportunity for them, you know, to be a, an OA opponent, to get themselves ready for the playoffs. Because when I look at St. Clair Shores Lakeview right now, I know a lot of them have them going to Macomb County. Some of them have seen Detroit Cass Tech. I have them going to, I have them, you know, making a borderline Oakland-Macomb County um, district with West Bloomington and Safi Darson Tech. And, and certainly high season. That could be a really tough district for the Huskies. Especially if they got to play a team like West Bloomfield, who I think that, um, who I think if the Huskies were to play at Lakers, I don't think they have a chance against them. I don't think the, La I don't think the Huskies have a chance against the Lakers. But that's why they play the game. I got St. Clair Shores Lakeview knocking off Berkeley in this game. Um, there's going to have to be some changes made with the Bears staff this offseason. Because, you know, that team's hit rock bottom. They have really hit rock bottom. Something's got to be addressed there with that program. Something does. Because it, this is not, this is un Berkeley like this year. It really is. Um, it's got to be fixed. Um, let's go now to Royal Oak and Madison Heights Lampier. Um, you know, it, you know, when you look at success and you look at Royal Oak and you look at the Ravens this year, the last two weeks, they have played really good football. They've been competitive in several games this year. I've been really pleased with the Bears. Um, been really pleased with Berkeley. Um, Actually, with Royal Oak. Been really pleased with Royal Oak. Offensively, last two games, 74 points. That's good. That's good football. Yes, they lost to Athens in overtime. But the 37 points, the shutout last week of Berkeley to win the Battle of Woodward Trophy, that says something there. Really does. Now you get a big test before you head in the offseason. 
Now to see where you measure up. You're taking on Madison Heights Lampier. Solid team under Coach Roy Alzatoski. I know he was out two games early in the year. But he's got the Rams rolling right now. And Lampier's got a solid team. And Roy Oak's got to go down there. They got to go down to Lampier. Not a um, long drive for them. Really isn't. But it's a little bit of a long, it's a little bit of a drive for them. I mean, just going down, um, it's going down near Oakland Mall. So when you want to look at that situation, is for Royal Oak, I think Royal Oak's got a chance here. But they got to shut some players down, though. Madison Heights Lampier, they got some solid players. They got some talented players. And I think they're going to pose some problems for Royal Oak. But if Royal Oak's been playing off like they do offensively, they could give Madison Heights Lampier problems. They could give them problems. And if they do, I think they got a shot. Do I see it? Probably not. So, I think in that game there, I think Royal Oak, I think it's going to be tight. But at the end of the day, I think Madison Heights Lampier wins this one and gets ready for the playoffs. I know they're in Division Four. Um, could they see Harper Woods? Maybe. But do I see it? Not likely. So, we'll see. We'll see what the MHA does next on Sunday with their selection show. Because there's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how it one goes. Um, and then let's look at, um, then let's look at, we got Ferndale and St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. Been a rough year for both teams. Really, really rough year for both teams. Um, Ferndale, obviously, the high expectations coming in the year. I had them ranked to start the year at nine. I know Scott Bernstein probably is never going to listen to me ever again. Because I didn't expect Ferndale that. I mean, Ferndale had that strong start early on. Then they had that had that loss to Holly. And I think that really been rolled everything around. Um, No, it was a loss to... um. It was a week one loss early in the year. I think that really was the one that was telling of their season how that was going to be. They struggled this year. Um, I think injuries have hurt them. Um, but like I said, when you're going through a coordinator change like they've been through, it usually the second year it takes is where you expect results. It's like that with Berkeley. Um... Berkeley, they haven't gotten the results they wanted with the coordinator change. Um, Ferndale here, I would give them maybe one more year to be patient with them. Um, I think Ferndale next year is going to be better. Um, against St. Clair Shores Lakeshore here, um, this is an interesting game. I think it'll be tight. Um, but I really like the Shoreians in this one, though. I think St. Clair Shore's um Lake I think Lake Shore goes and knocks off Ferndale. Um unfortunate, but it is what it is. So we'll see what happens there. We'll see what happens there. And there's the Abigail Warren Fitzgerald. Um in this game here, um you really gotta look at of course the um you know, I, I think Abigail I think they're gonna roll in this one. Um, Warren Fitzgerald, they're a solid team. They're a playoff team. Um, they're in Division Three. I think they'll make some noise. But at the end of the day, I really like what Coach Bob Myers has been doing over there at Abdel. I really do. Um, yes, they had that setback against Seaholm. Um, but they bounced back against Pontiac. Um, so, I like Avondale in that one to knock off from Warren Fitzgerald and Warren. Um, let's go now from the gold games. Let's look at the um some other games here obviously we got Troy versus Frazier. Um this should be an interesting game. Um if healthy I know Frazier's got that upset win against Troy Athens that's absolutely killed Troy Athens this year. Um I don't think Troy's gonna have an issue with Frazier. I'd be shocked if they do. I'd be really shocked if they do. So but I'm gonna take Troy in that one over Frazier. Um Troy Athens, Utica Ford, um over at Runkle. Um, this one here, I just think that Troy Athens, 
They're going to finish the year out strong. I think they knock off Utica Ford at Runkle. Um, it'll be interesting to see what, what direction they go this offseason or if Vernon Burden, the, the unprincipled Adam Troy Athens, gets involved um, this offseason, of course, now being the principal there. Um, really curious to see what happens there with that program over there. Um, I think there's going to be some pressure next year on Tom Cook. I really do. So, you know, to produce results over at Troy Athens. Um, so we'll see what happens there with that with that program. Then we have Farmington and Utica. Um, I think in this game here, um, you know, Utica went in the Fal Falcon Field last year and beat Farmington when Utica had nothing to play for. <laughs> now Utica's got something to play for. If they win, possible postseason bird could be on the line here for Utica. Lost last week to Utica Eisenhower. Now, if they can knock off Farmington, you know, that'll be something to say. But Farmington, I don't know what them is. Will Cam Petaway play? It's a Thursday night game because Swinehart's being used on Thursday and also Friday. So it's a Thursday night game. So this will be very interesting to see how that matchup goes. And does Farmington... You know, does, you know, I think Farmington's got a chance in this game against Utica. If they want to return the favor, Farmington should go and beat Utica. They should. Utica looks beatable. I mean, they look really beatable. So, I like Farmington in this game because I think that, you know, Coach Jason Albright, his team is really prideful. Um, I think Cam Petaway comes back and plays um, in that game. If he doesn't, then Farmington's got no chance. So, but I like Farmington in this game against Utica. I think they keep Utica out of the playoffs this year. I really do. Southfield Arts and Tech, Detroit Renaissance. This looks like a mismatch on paper, and it looks like it's going to be. And Southfield Arts and Tech's in a real foul mood. Um, I'm going to take the Warriors in this one pretty convincingly. I mean, Isaiah Marshall is going to go out and senior night, have a big night. Tashi Braceful bounces back. Um, it wouldn't surprise me to go all air raid on them on um Detroit Renaissance before they get ready for the playoffs. It really wouldn't surprise me. Rochester taking on Wall Lake Northern. Um This game here, I think this is gonna be interesting. Um I really like where I mean Rochester, of course, had the tough loss in the Falcon Frenzy game to Stony Creek. Um, and then on the flip side, um, Rock, uh, Wall Lake Northern's coming off, uh, it's been an on and off year for the Knights. Um, I like Rochester in this game being at home. Um, I think they're going to knock off Wall Lake Northern. Um, but it'll be a tight game. I think it's going to be a really tight game, to say the least in that one. Um, and then we, and then we look at, um, and then we look at Stony Creek taking on um, New Baltimore, Anchor Bay. Um, both these teams, you know, it was going to be rough for both teams. But I think, you know, in this game here, I like the Tars in this game to knock off Stony Creek. I just think that being at home is going to help them here. Um, I, I just think that, um, you know, it's going to be a tight game. But I think New Baltimore, Anchor Bay, I, I just think they're going to have a bounce back in this one here. And I think they're going to win that one. Um, won't be an easy game, that is for sure. Um, and then let's do the OA versus OA games, um, before we talk about the top games around the league this week. Um, you got North Farmington against Bloopia Hills. Um, this game here, North's coming off in a foul mood. Um, I think North gets the job done at Bloopia Hills. Um, sends a message. Last year, they lost at Ron, at Ron Holland to Bloopia Hills. And I think, you know, um, I think North's going to get their revenge. Ryan Shelby's been healthy all year. Um, and I think, you know, they're just going to get ready for the playoffs. A lot of confidence. So I got Coach John Hurstein's team winning that game there in that one there. Um, Oak Park and West Bluefield. Six o'clock game, Night Valley. Oak Park wins that game. They're in the playoffs. They lose that game. They're praying. Um, I think Oak Park's praying. Um, the reason why I say this, West Bluefield. 
you got a quarterback in him, Rick Juan Nance. I mean, you got um Josh Tate had a bounce back game at running back last week. Marquis Morris had a nice game from the running playing um playing a wide receiver, playing a running back spot. He had a nice game against um A and T. Nigel Dutton, same thing against his former team last week. Um Oak Park, Abdi Ergio Guyton. Um I really think Oak Park's gonna be praying. Um, I don't see how how um they knock off West Boom. I just don't see it. Um, so they're gonna be sweating it out. Um, likely for sure. Um, in that game. Um, I I just think West Boom wins that one pretty convincingly over Oak Park. Um, West Boom gets ready for the playoffs. I think they're gonna get a number one seed. Um, maybe two home home games are in the cards for Coach Jack Hilbert's team. So we'll see what happens there with West Boom. It depends what it, what it does on Sunday. So we'll see what happens there going forward there. Um, <laughs> and then you have the Battle of Birmingham. <laughs> Groves versus Seaholm. The Battle of Birmingham. Groves has won 12 of the last 14, including a couple of playoff meetings. I know a lot of people in Seaholm have been sick and tired of, you know, looking with Groves kids, you know, kids going to Groves, you know, from Birmingham School District. Um, you look at that game, and I know Seahome's been getting a lot of disrespect. Of course, you know, Groves has had their number. And <laughs> obviously, Groves has played in a tougher division with the white, Seahome being in the blue. But you throw all that off the window. Seahome's got experience. They have the Kinney brothers. They have Kyle Robbins. Groves, you know they counter with Sanders. They counter with Hardy. They counter with with um with Woods in the secondary. They have Rogers in the secondary. I mean, I'll tell you what. That game has the makings of being a really good game. Really good game in the forest. Playoff like atmosphere. It's possible both these teams are likely to be seeing each other in the district. <laughs> and when you look at this matchup here, um, in this matchup here, I mean, if you're a Seahome fan, you just got to say, when is enough enough? And, you know, when is enough enough losing to your arch rival? When is it? So, this is going to be a good game. Both teams got experienced quarterbacks. Kane Hardy um, got... Crazy Kenny. Um, I think it's going to be a great game. And I know Seahome's been, I've been, I love what Seahome's been doing. I've heard Coach Jim D. Walls. He's been on my podcast. Called in many times. Um, Groves' is case, I've talked to Coach Flaherty um, a lot. And you look at this game here, this has got the makings of a classic. But when you look at it on paper, it looks like Groves is better on paper. They are better on paper. But my, but my heart tells me, my guts tell me one thing. My guts tell me take Groves. My heart's telling me take Seahome. So what do I follow here? Do I follow my gut or do I follow my heart? I'm going to follow my heart this time. I'm going to take Seahome. I think Seahome in this game is going to find a way, make a big play late. I think Kyle Robbins... Has a big game late, and I think Seahome goes and upsets Groves. Um, it gives Seahome numerous amount of confidence hanging in the postseason. Groves will be in the postseason as well. I mean, they're a lock. I'm not too worried about them. You know, and then don't forget about it. Focus on the postseason. And I think both teams, I think whoever wins this game, most likely could see Water from out in the first round. And Water from out didn't look good against, Mil against Milford at all. They really didn't look really good now at all in that game. Um, so that's my take on that one. That should be a fun one over at Birmingham, the Battle of 13 Mile. And then let's look at the others here, other big ones here to talk about. We got Harper Woods taking on Roseville. Battle of two playoff teams. Um, Harper Woods coming off that emotional win against Clarkston. Now they take on a very good Roseville team. Roseville's been very inconsistent. I mean, last year they knocked off Harper Woods. I think Harper Woods is a little bit different this time around. 
I expect it's going to be an athletic game. It'll be a really good, really, really finesse type of game between those two teams. I mean, Roseville, I know the Panthers have had a nice year. They've had some questionable losses as well. I mean, Lakeview beat them a couple weeks ago. That's the big reason why they're in the postseason is that win against Roseville. I really think in that game, I think it's going, I think Harper Woods goes to Roseville and returns the favor. I mean, it's not a far trip from Harper Woods to Roseville. It's really not. I mean, it's a little bit further, further west for Harper Woods going to Roseville in Macomb County, a little northwest there. I think Harper Woods goes and shocks Roseville. Experience matters in that game. I think the pink uniforms say a lot in that game. Um, I just think that the Pioneers, um, with both quarterbacks, Nate Washlow and um, Stephon Buford, um, they, they, they're going to confuse Roseville defensively. Um, I think Harper Woods defensively is a little bit more better than they were last year. Um, so I really like where the Pioneers are at. And I think getting ready to be in Division Four for the postseason, that says a lot where they're at. I really like Harper Woods to go in that game and knock off a really good um, Roseville team to get themselves some confidence heading into the playoffs. Adams and Slavonia and Sterling Heights Stevenson. This one's interesting because you look at that game. Last year, Adams went in the run goal and won that game. Time Parker Pico. Now Adams is a little bit younger this year. Ryan, o Ryan Waters, at quarterback. Brady Prescott, he's back for Adams. I think Brady Prescott goes nuts against the Titans again. And I think he's going to have a big game, considering what he's been through. I think Adams, you know, goes in this, I mean, goes and beats Sterling Heights Stevenson. Stevenson this year, they've had some wins. They play in the MAC Red, you know, and that's that's not an easy conference because you're playing against teams like Chippewa Valley, Macomb, Dakota, Romeo, Utica, Eisenhower. That's not easy to do. And Austin Wapwank is in that division. So I think in this game here, I think Adams being at home, being in front of the fans, in front of the Gold Rush, um, I think. It, and you run one of the most sophisticated offenses in all football, the Veer option, the Veer offense. That just says something right there. That just says something right there. Um, so in that game, I'm taking Adams in that one. I think Adams wins that one. Maybe makes a move up to the three line. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there with Adams um, and Sterling Heights Stevenson. Big game for both teams considering for playoff positioning. Should be a fun one between those two teams. Really should be. Um, then you have Oxford versus UAD Jesuit over at Wildcat Stadium. Oxford knocked off North Farms to get to this game. That's big. 34-7 behind dominant play of Luke Johnson. UAD Jesuit's a different animal. When you look at the Cubs, they... They're in the playoffs, obviously. They have been rolling. They have a win against Seaholm. That's a big win for them at the time. They also knocked off Oak Park. But Oxford also knocked off Oak Park. This is going to be a telling game. This is going to be a telling game. Does Oxford deserve to get in the postseason? For them, it's win and they're in. I know Coach Jack Lai, I look at that. It, there's some similarities to the 2021 year when Oxford got into the playoffs. They had to knock off Chippewa Valley to get in the playoffs. They did that. Now, same situation here. You knock off UD Jesuit, you're in the playoffs. Do I think Oxford gets in the playoffs? Yes, they do. I like the Cats in this game against the Cubs. Luke Johnson has... A not another monster game. Jack Hendricks, I think he's going to have a big game. And you look at that matchup there, I really think Oxford, you know, if the Katie brothers make a ton of noise in this game, and I think they will be, I think Oxford can go in there at home, knock off UD Jesuit. They do that. They do that. The magic of Oxford football is back. 
And could you just imagine, could you imagine if Oxford and Lake Orion played in the first round of the playoffs? That could happen. That could really happen. If, you know, if everything works out. I mean, that could seriously happen. Oxford, Lake Orion, could you just imagine that game? Could you? That would be a fun game. That would be a really interesting game between those two teams. Um, if those teams were to play. Um, but I like Oxford in this game against UD Jesuit. I think the Wildcats, um, you know, I, I think that they have just enough defensively. Um, now, yes, UD Jesuit was a very good team. But I just think they have just enough to do it and get it done. And if they do, they're in the playoffs. If they don't, they're done. That's really what it is for Oxford. I've said this before. You win out, you're in. That's what Oxford's case is right now. And then there's Clarkson, Utica, Eisenhower. Um, when you look at this game, um, you know, how do I explain it for Clarkson? Because they need both Bowman twins. They need Ryan Rector to step up. And then you can't just, and then they need more from Blake Cozen. From Brody Cozen. They need more from Brody Cozen. They really do. Um, and then on the flip side, you know, you can't just rely on Desmond Stevens to save you. You can't rely on him. You know, that's not winning football. Your defense has given up 66 in the last two weeks. Now you get to deal with Preston Crum. That's going to be tough. That's going to be really tough. Um, in this game here, um, I just think, I know a lot of people are saying Eisenhower is going to win this game. Ike's going to win this game. They got the defense. They got, I mean, they talked about, you know, hunger, success, and all that. But this is Clarkston. This is Clarkston. I mean, this is Coach Pintar, Coach Justin Pintar. This is the Wolves. You have the aura of the Wolves. You have the, you have the aura around them. You have, to, you have a, you have Devin Stevens there on one side. You have Brody Cozen, Indiana Command on the other side. I mean, this is going to be an interesting game. But I'm going to take Clarkson in this game. I think Clarkson really, I think they, they've been played a battle-tested schedule. I think they're going to be there to prove that the loss of Harper Woods was a fluke. Um, now, albeit I saw Harper Woods is a better team in that game than Clarkson, but Clark, if Clarkson wants to prove they're Clarkson, they got to go and win it at Swiner. If they can do that, they're going to be fine. If not, they're staring Davidson right in the face in the first round. And I, I know Clarkson fans would love to go to Davidson. I don't think they would love to go to Lake Orion. I really think they would love to go to Davidson. So we'll see what happens. I mean, if Clarkson wins against Eisenhower, they might get a home game out of this. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. And then the game is staked. You got Lake Orion and Celine. 8 0 versus 8 0. Celine really hasn't been battle tested that much. They got a very good tight end. They got CJ Carr at quarterback. Lake Orion's got all that boatload of experience. Last season, Celine went to Lake Orion and embarrassed, embarrassed them. They've won the last two meetings against Lake Orion. They've won the last two meetings. This is going to be an interesting game. I think this has got shootout written all over it. Because I know both teams' defense, I, mean, I know both teams have solid defenses. Now, Celine, I don't know about their defense. They haven't really been battle tested. I think Lake Orion gives them a test. I think when you look at the draft, and then you look at, of course, Lake Orion's case, they haven't seen a quarterback like CJ Carr. So, both sides have tests coming up, big tests coming up. And you look at that game, this has the makings of a classic. It does. <laughs> but in this game here, I mean, yes, they know each other. There's really no X's and O's. Coaching match between Coach Joe Palka and Lake Orion Coach Chris Bell makes it really interesting. But when I look at both teams, and I saw both teams on tape, I mean, Celine, we know... C.J. Carr makes up for a lot of Celine's um, deficiencies, especially with the quick passing game um, that they like to throw with. Um, 
I know Celine last week won 70 nothing against Ann Arbor Skyline. But when I look at this game here, I think Lake Orion's played a far tougher schedule than Celine has. So in this game here, I'm going to take the team that's played the tougher schedule in this game, and that is Lake Orion. I'm going to take the Dragons in this one. In a tight game, I think this is going to be a 41-35 game, 42-35 game. Or may, I mean, I think it's going to be high 40s. I mean, low 40s, maybe low 40s, mid 40s type of game. So that's my take on that game. I think Lake Orion does win that game um, in a shootout because I don't think Celine has answers for Billy Roberson. Um, and I and I think the X back in that game is Dom Novak. If Lake Orion takes care of the football, I think they go and win that game because you know Celine's a team that's very discipline oriented. So we'll see what happens there. So it should be a fun one between the Dragons and the Hornets down in Celine this weekend. Um, the selection show is coming up this Sunday. Um, <coughs> you'll get my thoughts on the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. I'll also post the old TV blog as well. Um, and then we'll also talk more about the playoffs on Monday's podcast coming up next Monday. So we're going to see what happens going forward there. Everyone we're signing off here. Um, take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care. And see you then. God bless all.